Eight questions on page 168 for homework last night. We're going to take a look at questions five and eight this afternoon. Question five says an object is resting on a level table. Are the normal force and the gravitational force acting on the object action reaction forces? Explain your reasoning. This is a great question. This is a great question. How many people say the answer to this question is yes? I'm not looking for reasoning yet or rationale. I'm just looking for an answer. How many people say yes? Okay. How many people say no? So lots of people say that it is an action-reaction force. Some people say that it's not. Um, anybody got a reason for me? Anybody tell me why uh, the, for, the normal force and the force of gravity are action-reaction forces? Or can anybody tell me why they're not action-reaction forces? Yeah, City? Yeah. Okay, so they would be action-reaction forces because, uh, first of all, they're equal and opposite, and gravity causes the normal force. So the force of gravity, action force, the reaction force that reacts to that is the normal force. That sounds like pretty good logic, doesn't it? It's pretty good logic. It's not right, but it's pretty good logic. The good news is, or the bad news is, however you want to look at it, is more people agree with you than disagree with you. It means that more people are incorrect on that one. Uh, that's okay. This is a tough question. Okay. I, I, I'm looking for people to volunteer answers here. You shouldn't be um, embarrassed if you make a mistake on this. This is a tough question. Okay, it is. This is not a simple, um, oh, kick a soccer ball. What's the action-reaction force? Action force is your toe kick in the... The, the soccer ball and the reaction forces of the soccer ball kicking back. Okay, this is a this is a harder question. That definitely. What do you have to say about this one? So they are action re reaction forces. Okay. No. It's, that's good. To, it's good thoughts. Good to logic. It's it's okay to be wrong with something, guys. It really is. It's okay to be wrong. If I, hey, if I'm in grade 11 and I'm answering this question for the first time, I don't know that I'm going to get this question right. If I'm in physics 20 for the first time, it's a hard question. No, it's not. It's not an action-reaction force. Not at all. Why not? The net force is zero. Remember what we said about action-reaction forces? The net force isn't zero because, let's go back to the law. If object A applies a force on object B, object B will apply an equal and opposite force on object A. So what we're saying here, guys, is that gravity is applied on the person or the object on the table. The normal force is applied on the object on the table. The force is acting on the same thing. That's not an action-reaction force, because action-reaction forces always act on opposite things, on different things. Remember the first day we did Newton's third law? I said, this is maybe the hardest one to understand. I said, this, it's entirely possible that your grade 6 teacher, your grade 7 teacher, didn't even really understand Newton's third law themselves when they taught it to you. Because this is what people think. As soon as you have a force that's equal and opposite, it has to be an action-reaction force. It has to be Newton's third law. This is not Newton's third law at all. If you want to talk about the action-reaction force, okay, the force of the Earth pulls down on the object. That's gravity, right? That's the action force. What's the reaction force? It's not the ground pushing up. It's the object pulling up on the Earth. The Earth pulls down on the object. The object pulls up on the Earth. It's a force of gravitational attraction upwards on the Earth. Now, here's the question, though. If the Earth is pulled up as strongly as the object is pulled down, why is it that the object falls downward toward the ground and the Earth doesn't pull upward toward the object? I had this discussion with somebody yesterday. I can't remember who it was. Was it you guys? Why not? Why doesn't the object, uh, sorry, why does the object fall down towards the earth, but the earth doesn't fall upwards toward the object if the forces are the same? Yep. 
the mass of the Earth is so much bigger than the mass of the object. And we know that acceleration is equal to F over M. The force can be the same, but if the mass of the Earth is so much bigger, then the acceleration of the Earth would be so much smaller. The object will fall downwards at a rate of 9.81, and when it hits the table, it'll stop, but still be pulled downwards with that same force. The Earth is pulled upwards with the same force, but because its mass is so big, it doesn't accelerate very much. Does the Earth go up towards the object? Yeah, it does. Yes, it does. It truly does. But it's so such a little amount because of the mass of the Earth that it's basically um, immeasurable how much the Earth rises up. Make sense? If the Earth was a thousand times heavier than the object, then the Earth would accelerate upward toward the object a thousand times less than the object accelerates down. But the object is maybe 10 to the 2 kilograms, 10 to the 1 kilograms. The mass of the Earth is 10 to the 24 kilograms. That means the Earth is going to accelerate upward. Yes, it will, but about 10 to the 23 times less than the object accelerates downward. So these are not action-reaction forces. They're two related forces, for sure. Without one, you don't have the other. But they're not action-reaction forces. Action-reaction forces always involve two objects. The Earth and the object, not the object and the object, like we have here. Does that make sense? All right, the other one we have to do is question number eight, which, of course, I expected us to have to go over this one. This is much like the questions we did in class yesterday, finding the tension, the action-reaction force, the tension in between two objects. Okay? And, of course, um, that's, uh, there's quite a bit to solving one of those problems. Says blocks X and Y are attached to each other by a light rope and can slide along a horizontal frictionless surface. Hey, that's good news. Right now, they don't have any friction. Block X has a mass of 10 kilograms. Block Y has a mass of 5 kilograms. An applied force of 36 newtons to the right axis on block X. We want to know the action reaction forces that the block exerts on each other. In other words, we want to find the tension in the rope that joins the two. This is what we did yesterday, right? Find the tension in the rope that joins the two. We got to first find the acceleration here, right? Remember yesterday we did we had two columns, right? We had two columns. The first one we analyzed the entire system. The applied force here is 36 newtons. There is gravity in the normal force, but they cancel out, so we're not going to draw those in, just to simplify this a little bit. We say the net force on this system is equal to the sum of the forces. But good news, there's only one. There's only one of them. It's the applied force. The net force is the mass times the acceleration, and the mass is 15 kilograms. Use the entire mass. A, the acceleration of the system, which is not what we're looking for, but we need to find to get what we're looking for. 36 divided by 15, what's that going to be? 2.4 meters per second squared. Good. Okay, that's half the battle. Once we have the acceleration of the system, then we know we have the acceleration of each object within the system. Let's analyze one object. Uh, I'm going to pick object Y. Seems like it's the easiest because it has less forces acting on it. So we've got a 5-kilogram object being pulled to the right by the rope. The tension. That's what I'm looking for, is the tension in that rope, the action-reaction forces between the blocks. Now I'm going to say F net is equal to the sum of the forces. There's only one force. Again, that's good. F net is 5 times acceleration this time of 2.4. We don't use the total mass of 15 because we're analyzing only one object. 5 times 2.4 would be the 12. How many people got a value of 12 newtons there? Good. How many people analyzed object number 2 there, the 10 kilogram object? Did you get 12 newtons? Of course, right? You would actually get negative 12 newtons, right? Because it's going to be a force to the left. But they're both correct. Okay, the action force would be negative 12, actually. The reaction force would be positive 12. But I'll take either one of them.
Let's take a look at B now. B says calculate the action, re sorry, B says suppose the magnitudes of the force of friction on block X and Y are 8 newtons and 4 newtons respectively. What's the action reaction forces the block exerts on each other now? Let's erase this. Start again. Now let's analyze the system. We've got an object here that has a mass of 5 kilograms, object here that has a mass of 10. We have an applied force this way that is uh, 36 newtons. Now this time we have a force of 4 newtons. We'll call that FF1. And we have a force this way of 8 newtons that we're going to call FF2. So we get two forces of friction, one on each of the objects. We've got to do the same thing now. It's just a little bit harder because we have three forces instead of one. To solve for the acceleration, which is always what we do first, unless we're given the acceleration, we're going to say F net is equal to the sum of the forces. FF1 plus FF2 plus FA. F, times, F net is equal to the sum of the forces. F net is also equal to M times A. The mass is 15. FF1 is negative 4 plus negative 8 plus positive 36. What's that equal? Uh, 24, I think. 36 minus 8 minus 4. 24. And A is going to be equal to, what is that, 24 divided by 15? 1.6, thank you. Usually I like to do it on beside it, um, but I don't have room there, so I'm going to do it below it. That's not a big deal. Now I just got to make sure I pick one object. Probably the 5 kilogram object again. It seems like it's the simplest. We have a force to the right. That's the tension. Any more forces acting on it besides gravity and normal that cancel? Yeah. Friction. What's the force of friction acting on it? Good. We're going to call that FF1 is 4 newtons. FF2 here of 8 newtons, that's not on it, is it? That's acting on the other object. So we're going to say now F net is equal to the sum of the forces. FF1 plus FT. F net is M times A. But the mass here is 5, not 15. The acceleration is still 1.6 because the whole thing accelerates at that rate. FF1 is 4 newtons. And FT is what we're looking for there. 5 times 1.6 is 8, I think. Yes, it should. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Uh, so it's 8 on the left-hand side. The 4 goes over by uh, adding. So Ft becomes equal to 12 newtons. Make sense? Ends up being the same thing. Why does it end up being the same thing? That's what we got for the last one. Why does it end up being the same value? There's friction acting on it now. You would think this rope would have to pull harder because there's friction acting on the 5 kilogram object, right? But there's also friction acting on the 10 kilogram object. So it's proportional. The friction here, the, the mass on the 10 is twice the mass of the 5. The friction is twice the friction of the 5. So it ends up essentially not being important to the, to the whole deal, right, in terms of the tension of the rope. If friction was on one of them and not the other, then it would change that value. That's good. You may need me to keep that up there. We're going to move forward here now and uh, use Newton's second law to solve more multi-force problems, kind of like we did on our quiz today, except um, more application-based questions. Things like the question you see up on the board right now, which is what I call an elevator problem. This one says a 73-kilogram man, which is basically me, stands in an elevator that accelerates downward at a rate of 2 meters per second squared. With what force does the elevator floor push up? What's the man's actual weight? What's the normal force? What's the man's apparent weight? What I want you to see after we're done this question, and after you've copied it down, 
is that this question is exactly the same as the quiz question you had. It's exactly the same as all of those other problems involving more than one force. So how do we tackle this? Well, we tackle this the same way as we tackle any other force question. When you have more than one force acting, draw a free body diagram. Here's the guy. He's standing on the floor of an elevator. I don't care what the elevator looks like around him. I care about the guy inside the elevator. He experiences two forces act on, acting on him. Can you tell me what one of those two forces is? No one, what's one of those two forces that acts on this guy? Good. Gravity acts which way? Good. Gravity acts downwards on him. Gravity's always going to act downward on him, right? What's the other force? Somebody else. Mackenzie? Sorry? Good. The normal force acts upward on him. Now, I can draw that normal force right here. I can draw that normal force below him. It doesn't matter where I draw it as long as I draw it upwards. Now, technically, he's accelerating downward at a rate of 2. So that means the normal force isn't pushing as hard as gravity. So that means the normal force is smaller in magnitude than gravity. We're not going to lose too much sleep over that. That's the least important part of this question, drawing the vectors the right length. But strictly speaking, uh, normal force should be shorter than the force of gravity because it's smaller. Because it accelerates downward. Okay, there it is. There it is. There's my free body diagram. You don't know how to solve the rest of this problem? Do what comes next. What comes next? Always after we have a free body diagram drawn. Yep, Sabina? Good. F net is the sum of the forces. Now, this is the first time we've had the sum of the forces being Fn and Fg, because usually they cancel out, right? Remember I told you when we started this whole multi-force thing, this whole free body diagram thing, the force of friction, when we did friction, we said gravity and the normal force will be the same value until I tell you otherwise. I'm telling you otherwise. The gravity and the normal force aren't the same value here. They don't cancel each other out because it's not at rest. The guy is accelerating downward. Okay, gravity has to be bigger. They don't cancel out, so the sum of the forces is Fn plus Fg. Now, the next step, of course, is to say Ma is equal to Fn plus Fg. And the mass of the guy, 73 kilograms. The normal force, oh, wait, we know the acceleration, don't we? The acceleration is, what am I going to put in for that one? Cody, what do you want to put in for that one? Almost. Nope. Nope. Negative. Nope. Negative 2. He's not falling at 9.81. Listen, I've been in an elevator sometimes that accelerates downward pretty quickly. You feel your stomach going up into your throat. But it wasn't accelerating downward at 9.81, because if it was... You're in some trouble, right? If your, your elevator is accelerating downward at 9.81, it means the cable broke and you're plunging to your death, which, while you're plunging, may be actually kind of fun. But when you hit, not so much so. Um, you're not accelerating downward at 9.81. You're accelerating downward at negative 2. Now, gravity will still be neg 9.81, but the acceleration of the elevator will be hopefully less than that. Yep, notice? It doesn't move faster than you, but I know exactly what you're saying. Um, the question, if you didn't hear it, was when you're on one of those drop rights, um, how come it moves downward faster than you and you just kind of stay where you are? Um, it doesn't move faster than you. You accelerate downward at 9.81 meters per second squared, so does it. You both free fall. Okay. Now, uh, why do you kind of stay where you are for a second? Because an object at rest wants to stay at rest until acted upon by an unbalanced force. So. For a brief moment, you kind of remain at rest, and then it's like, oh, wait, there's nothing below me pushing me up. So then there's an unbalanced force acting on me, pulling me down. So you don't end up flying up into the air. What you end up doing is kind of just hovering above the seat just a little bit, okay. which makes you feel like your stomach is going up into your throat, right? It makes you feel like that because you only experience it for like three seconds. If you experience that for longer, it would actually settle your stomach would actually settle, and you would find yourself just feeling a sensation of weightlessness. It wouldn't feel sickening at all, like a throat in the stomach at all. 
Um, once everything kind of settled, everything would be falling at the same rate, including your body, including your stomach, including the ride. Everything would be falling at 9.81, so you'd just be going with it. Okay. Make sense? All right, what's the normal force here? That's what we're looking for, right? The force of the elevator 4, that's the normal force, plus the force of gravity. Uh, that's going to be 73 times, can we? 73 times what? Right, negative 9.81. Uh, 73 times negative 2 is neg 146. Uh, 73 times 9.81 is... Negative 716.13. Thank you, Cody. Um, now, we're going to take that to the other side by adding. So what's negative 146 plus 716? Five seventy point one three. We'll round that to two digits. Five point seven times ten to the two newtons. All right. There's the force of the floor pushing up on the guy. B. What's the man's actual weight? I'll give you a hint on this one. It's easy, but it's not quite as easy as some of you are thinking right now. What's his actual weight? No, that's his actual mass. 73 kilograms is his mass. Sabina, what's his actual weight? Good. 73 times 9.81. So we're going to say FG, his weight is M times G. We're going to say it's 73 times 9.81 or 716.13. Okay, there's his weight. Guys, look at this. The normal force is 5.7. The downward force is 7.2. We established right away that the gravity had to be bigger, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't be accelerating downward. Sure enough, when we do the math, it works out that way. Gravity is bigger than the normal force. What is the normal force? Wait, we already did that, didn't we? The force of the elevator 4 is the normal force. 5.7 times 10 to the 2 newtons. There's no more calculation to do there. Once you've got the normal force, you've got the answer to A and C. What about D? What's the man's apparent weight? What's his weight? How heavy is he really? 7.2. How heavy does he feel? We talked about this. We never solved a problem mathematically like this, but we've talked about it. How heavy does he feel? If he's free falling, fall, not free falling, but falling down in the elevator at 2 meters per second squared, Fotis kind of asked, kind of alluded to this earlier, right? Sam, um, you know, why is it that you kind of stay up? Why does your throat go up into your stomach, whatever, or your stomach go up into your throat, whatever? Why do you feel lighter? Why do you feel lighter when you're falling? Yeah, what is it? No. Nope. No. Nope. You feel lighter because the normal force is the apparent weight. My weight is seven, sorry, is uh, 7.2. My apparent weight is 5.7. Uh, so I feel lighter than I really am. My apparent weight is just the normal force. Remember that. On November 24th, when we do our big field trip to West Edmonton Mall, there's going to be a number of questions where you have to find your apparent weight, how heavy you feel on the roller coaster, how heavy you feel on this ride or on that ride. How heavy you are is M times G. How heavy you feel is the normal force. I'm going to give you a second here, a few minutes to, uh, to uh, answer some practice problems on page 152. Now, uh, page 152 refers back, to, refers back to an example here on uh, page 151. Let me just copy that over, actually. You don't have to do this example, but I'll copy it over and put it on the next page so that you can at least get the data from that when you're solving question number one. Okay, see what we can do with those now, please. <laughs> 